Andy House would like to introduce the story Cold Wind on the Wild Mound based on the true story in the western region South Vietnam Chapter 1 Spirit of the Darkness Deep in the immense field the western land is huge and large at the time of the new plating, the rice field is trade and huge, not seeing the horizon. The land is abundant but the population is sparse. The most crowded village only has about 20 rooftops. The living person is less than the dead. They are scattered everywhere. Not grave. Cold in the land. The dark mountains are full of sparks and ghosts. Also, this area has long fought war. The people who plow the field sometimes find out the human bones. People also ignore it as animal bones to reduce fear. Even Mr. Moy, at the same time with workers hooked up to the ground, was also able to found each piece, each piece of bone buried in cold mud. Seeing them fear, he laughed and said that was buffalo bones saying that, but waiting for them to leave, he carefully gathered it into a jar made of chinaware. When the work is done, the jar is nearly full. He brought through the cemetery next to his house. He digs a pit, covering small soil, putting incense. He prayed. I am from another area to live here. Now accidentally affect the predecessors. From now on I will incense here. I hope incense souls bless our life. He looked around, this wilderness where he had the rest of his life. About the bone jar. He did not dare to tell Mrs. Moy because she was afraid of ghosts. Every night, she stayed in the house. But one day, in the middle of midday, the sunshine was so intense, Mrs. Moy heard the noise of the noise. Lying in a nap in a hammock, she got up and looked out. The two men were holding a man who looked pale, bland, soft. And the woman beside him just walked and cried, with her eyes closed. She resigned herself to a moment before realizing it was the acquaintance. They were neighbors, and the woman was Mrs. Then often selling fish to her. At this time, Mr. Moy came out of the house. He shouted at the two men carrying the sick person onto the wooden panel. Then he rushed to use his chopsticks to pry his mouth out. Hurry up and hold his hands and feet. He won't bite his tongue. Let's go into the house and take here the blue jar. That's not deadly now. At this time, the patient had limbs. The eyes grow white. Mouth foaming mouth. The teeth clenched. He is very critical. Mr. Moy sweated, using the left hand to seal acupuncture points on the forehead. The right hand stuffed the chopsticks into the middle of the teeth. Hold the jar of wife. Poured into the patient's mouth with a pungent odor pouring out. About a slice of his body gradually softened. The patient's breathing became more regular. He pulled out the chopsticks. Sweating sweat on his forehead. He shouted at Mrs. Then. You're still sitting there crying? Go inside. Take out the warm water. I take some medicine for massage. Is he okay, Mr. Moy? The muscular man with a long scar on his shoulder asked. Not yet, just through the danger, not dead is lucky, but why now bring him here? Without waiting for the two to answer, he took the towel of his wife and wiped his face. The two of you came here to drink tea. Let his wife take care of his body. Massage him. He told his wife. Please help her. Take the medicine in the jar mixed with warm water and rub his chest. I took some medicine ladders for him. 
Two men hold the cup of tea and drink. Looking at them, they seem to be filled with strength. With heavy work and under sunshine, they were trained to become muscular men. Mr. Moy asked, What's wrong with him? He's as strong as an elephant. There's no disease before. Why he has epilepsy? You said he has epilepsy? Yes, I think so. I think he was possessed by ghosts. Foolish. What the devil is here? It's true. Do you know where we found him? On Mrs. Jin's mound. His voice trembled. At noon, what did he do there? I see him as him slumped head in the apple. I called him, but he didn't come down. His eyes were white. When we brought it down, we felt cold all over. Only fear of being possessed by ghosts is miserable. Mr. Moy silently took a small sip of his tea and turned his eyes to the faraway field. The night fell, and there was only the sound of crickets, and the wind of the leaves rustled with the night of solitude. He knew after the tree at the end of his garden was an immense space. That place now only has a cold wind, blowing through the young rice fields and lonely grave mounds, dense patches of trees with sparks. When he came here, he heard many things that he thought were myths. As a good practitioner, he did not believe very much. But living up to this age, after experiencing many ups and downs of life, there are things that he had to disbelief, like the story of the sacred mound. Hearing the sound of Mrs. Moy breathing softly in the chamber, he contemplated the story of the people here often talking during their free time.